Hello everyone. Welcome to Logic Medical. Today's interesting topic is histology of the liver and also the clinical importance with respect to hepatic lobule, portal lobule and hepatic acinus. So this is the hepatic lobule, this is the portal acinus and this is the hepatic acinus or the liver acinus. To understand the difference between the three, first let us understand the histology of the liver. The human liver is highly metabolically active. So most of the biochemical reactions takes place in the liver. This liver consists of rich amount of hepatocytes. Each of these hepatocytes, since they are metabolically active, may have two or more nuclei. That shows that it is mitotically active. The lifespan of the hepatocytes ranges between 4 to 6 months based on the toxicity to which it is exposed. Each of these hepatocytes are arranged in sheets. As you know, the liver is a wedge shaped organ. So these are placed in sheets to form the entire liver. These sheets, if you take a cut section of the liver, you will see like this, like an hexagonal shape structural lobule called as hepatic lobule. So hepatic lobule is a structural or the anatomical lobule of the liver. At the center of this lobule there are veins called as central vein. At the periphery of this lobule there is three structures which are called as portal triad structures. The six corners of the hepatic lobule has got the structures in the portal triad which includes the hepatic artery branch, the portal vein branch and a tiny ductule called as bile ductule. Here we need to understand that the hepatic artery gives 20% blood supply to the liver which is containing oxygen rich blood which it transport to the liver for metabolism purpose. Whereas the portal vein which drains the GAT carries the nutrition rich blood to the liver. The flow of blood in the liver is from these portal triads towards the central vein. So the flow of blood is centripetal. During its flow from the portal triad towards the central vein, we can see amidst the hepatic cords of cells, there are spaces. These are called as sinusoids, hepatic sinusoids. So the hepatocytes radiate from the central vein to the periphery in a cord of cells which branches and anastomose with one another around the sinusoid. Each of these hepatocytes are in the form of a diamond shape. It has got multiple surfaces, minimum 6 surfaces like a cube, maximum can be 25 surfaces like a cut of a diamond. The surface facing one another will have a tiny 1 mm depression, the surface facing the adjacent hepatocyte. This 1 mm depression forms bile canamiculi. So the flow of the bile is from the central vein towards the portal triad where we have the ductule to collect the bile. It is called the bile ductule. The cells lining the ductule are called as cholangiocytes. The cells lining the, these blood vessels are called as endothelium and the cells lining the sinusoids are again sinusoidal cells are the endothelium. And the major cell of the liver is the hepatocytes. In addition to all this, what we have to understand is around the sinusoids there is perisinusoidal space and around the portal triad there is periportal space. So around the perisinusoidal space we have a special type of cell called as itocell. This itocell is also called stellate cell, hepatic stellate cell. It is it has got the function of storing fat droplets or the lipid material. So in addition to the fat droplet or lipid material, it also stores the fat soluble vitamin which is vitamin A, D, E, K. If at all there is any toxic injury to the hepatocytes, these cytocells or the hepatic stellate cell will undergo rapid mitosis to give rise to the connective tissue fiber. So in the liver there will be fibrosis which is termed as cirrhosis of the liver. So hepatocytes when they are damaged, initially they are replaced by the neighboring hepatocytes. But if the damage is so severe that the neighboring hepatocyte is not able to compensate this damage, 
and the ito cell will come into the action and it will replace this by hepatocytes by connective tissue fiber which is called as fibrosis or cirrhosis initially on the surface of the liver we have a tiny less than 3m nodules it's called micronodular cirrhosis and subsequently it has got more than 3mm uh, size of nodules it's called as macronodular cirrhosis in addition to these these hepatic lobules we can see that the bile flow is from the central towards the periphery so it is centrifugal the blood flow is centripetal and the bile flow is centrifugal so this is in detail about the histology of the liver so let's understand what is the difference type of globules present within the liver just now we saw this hexagonal shaped structure it's a structural unit the very little connective tissue is there in the corners of this hexagon it is pictorial representation we have drawn abundant connective tissue so this hexagonal shaped structure that is anatomical or a structural unit of the liver is called as hepatic lobule it is based on anatomical structure in the form of hexagon the center of this is formed by a central vein and each of these corners there is portal triad the structures in the portal triad are hepatic artery branch which gives oxygenated blood portal vein branch which gives nutritious blood which contains carbohydrate protein lipid from the GAT and the bile duct which drains the bile from the liver so this is the anatomical or the structural unit of the liver that is called as hepatic lobule so what is visible to your eye is anatomy so the structure so it's called the hepatic lobule come up with the other two structures as a portal lobule and liver essence so let's understand one by one the portal lobule as the name suggests consists of the portal triad in the center it is triangular as you can see in this picture each of the corners of this triangle is is occupied by a central vein so this is called as portal lobule since portal vein is there in the center actually this is an excretory unit of the liver as we can see the hepatocytes present from here will drain the bile towards this present here will drain the bile towards this present from here will drain the bile towards it so all these are each of the hepatic lobule the bile secretion pours from the central vein towards the portal triad see central vein towards the portal triad central vein towards the portal triad so this is actually the excretory unit or the draining unit of the liver called as a portal lobule so if at all there is damage to the liver structural damage occurs in the hepatic lobule whereas if there is a problem in the bile ductules huh, due to some problem then there is a problem in the portal lobule last but not the least the liver acinus or the hepatic acinus is roughly oval or rhomboid in shape this oval or rhomboid in shape it's mainly the the perfusion unit the hepatic artery gives a branch you can see that i have drawn one magnitude here so the hepatic artery is giving branch in this adjacent hepatic lobules so this is a short axis of the liver acinus which is formed by the branches of the hepatic artery whereas the long axis of this hepatic acinus is formed by the central vein so this branch the artery is given the artery as i mentioned already artery contains rich amount of oxygenated blood so these cells which are present over here this is called the zone 1 will receive rich amount of oxygen whereas this one in the intermediate zone or the zone 2 contains moderate amount of oxygen and those which are very far away from this hepatic artery that is a peri peri central zone around the central vein over here this gets least oxygen supply so this is based on the perfusion or the metabolic activity of the liver or the pathological process of the liver so how is it how to understand this perfusion so blood goes here first so around around 70% of the blood will be taken up by the hepatocytes present here 20% will be taken up by the hepatocytes present here in zone 2 and remaining 10% will be taken up here imagine the blood flow is sluggish here it's, it's, it's flowing in a less quantity so zone 1 nothing is going to happen zone 2 also will present but around the central vein we can see the necrosis of the liver so that is because of ischemia to the liver the 
pericentral zone will be affected first because less blood flows to this area called the zone 3. Imagine the other way around if a person consumes poison, the poison enters the blood stream, it's observed. Okay, the poison is coming over here by the branch of the hepatic artery. So toxic injury to the liver occurs in a peripotal zone that is around the portal vein because the blood supply is maximum here. So whatever oxygen is coming and whatever toxin is coming, so metabolically these cells are exposed. So toxic injury to the liver is peripotal, whereas ischemic injury to the liver is pericentral. Because less blood reaches the central vein area and most of the blood reaches the peripotal zone. So this is the understanding of the pathology of the liver. Therefore, this is also called the pathological unit of the liver or the metabolic unit of the liver or the perfusion unit of the liver. To summarize, hepatic lobule is an anatomical unit of the structural unit. Whereas portal lobule which is triangular in outline with the portal vein in the center is a physiological unit or excretory unit it can be called as an exocrine gland liver is an exocrine gland right so this is an excretory unit whereas this liver racinus can be which is oval or rhomboid in shape can be considered as perfusion unit because based on the hepatic artery perfusion zone 1 closer to the hepatic artery zone 2 in the intermediate and zone 3 closer to the central vein it can also be called as a metabolic unit or the pathological unit of the liver Thank you for watching and learning from Logic Medico. Have a good day. Bye.